No one can alter an iron, bronze, or tin without first of all roasting it red hot in the crucibles of the blacksmith's oven. Seek time and harvest revival labors, Ogidi. Present Minister's Leadership Refreshment and Endowment Retreat, May Red 2022. Tagged, Watch for Survival and Revival. Purity has become so mixed with purity, mass production Christianity is weak and cannot bear the armies of the aliens already at the gate. Classroom Christianity cannot survive the onslaught of the activities of end time spirit. God's handmade warriors are very few, but only fires of the highest voltage can make thick, dense, and unyielding metals flexible and liable to change. Date 3rd to the 9th of January 2022. Venue Mission House and Nairobi Villa, Ajilija Okidi, and Nambara State. God bless you and make you a committed follower of Jesus Christ as you listen to these divine instructions. In Jesus' name, Amen. Escape your revival. You are worthy to be praised. A little volume on my mind. Now the Lord. Upon. And unto you. We lift our voice. You are the Lamb. You are the Lamb of God. And you lift up your two hands to the Father. And say, You are glorious. For you are glorious. I'd like you to worship the Holy Ghost. You are the Lamb. of adoration if you have a mouth please in the next two minutes can you just lift up your voice wherever you are all over this camp can you lift up your voice begin to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords in your language let the adoration rise let the praise rise Please, can you increase the tempo of your worship? Can there be a holy noise in this camp? I don't know whether your voice is in the atmosphere. There is a frequency we must touch tonight. I'm still waiting for somebody's voice. Lift it up and worship.
Tonight we come before you, Almighty God. Our eyes may not see you, but we know you are here. For unto the Lord shall the garden of his people be. Father, we ask that you will turn this cloud into the fire of your presence, into the breath of your nostrils, into the rema that comes from the depth of your spirit. Lord, command or trans through my mouth. Give me instructions for these people more than I can utter by mortal sense. We cover this atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. And we bind spirits that are contrary. And we say, Lord, let the Holy Ghost have his free course tonight. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please put your hands together as you sit down. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's always an honor and uh, a delight to stand and preach on this very wonderful and hot altar of the Lord. I've been thoroughly blessed since I came. I bring greetings from my family, the ministry team in Kogi State. And I pray that this piece of time that we have will bless every head that is here in the name of Jesus. Uh, Brother Mecca, who gave this testimony, there are quite a number of things that came out of your testimonies that are like some, uh, you know, some leverage for some of the utterances I believe that God will be releasing to us this night as we, we, we look at the implications of being forged and being furnished for survival and for revival. I'm trusting God that if the teaching does not hold us for too, too long, we'll be praying for people and believing God for the flow of the power of God. And that's consistent with the burdens I have. And uh, Brother Emeka, the Lord bless you. What a manual on how to live in the things of the Spirit. Now, but so that I can be very straight with the pictures I want to create this night, from the time I received the invitation or the notices of this meeting, one particular picture of a survivalist and a revivalist that God started bringing to my mind. There are things I'm familiar with, but God pointed it to. I mean, pointed to it as the picture he will want me to, to navigate through to bring out his body for this meeting. And that's the man Moses. 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 He was a survivalist. He was also a revivalist. I will also want to echo to you tonight before I go into Moses. The first time I stood on this altar to preach, there was a prophecy that came out of my mouth. That prophecy has left my mind. My, uh, it's not something I think about. But just about a day before I came here, or the very day I came here, I started hearing the echo of that testimony. I mean, of that prophecy. And this is the echo of the testimony. The testimony said, People of the land of the rising sun, this is your hour. The prophecy said, it is not a coincidence that in this nation, you are the first to see the sun. Now, you don't know what it means to be in the east. It simply means before anybody in Nigeria saw the sun, the east saw the sun. And those of you that are elders, that hold the corridors of this altar and the pillars of this altar. I don't know why God brought that prophecy back. But I'm here to say with all audacity, with the kind of interpretation I receive in my spirit. That there is something that is going to happen to Nigeria. There is something that is going to happen to this country, to this land. 
And the trigger of that thing is coming from Igbo land. Our geography is our prophecy. Our location is our mirror. The Lord who makes you to see the sun first is saying, it is your hour. And my prayer for all of us is that the hour, the opportunity, the responsibility should not be mismanaged. Now, for as much as the amen is important, the echo of the amen is the needed response, of course. But I wish you would breathe in and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, because the prophecy is not supposed to command a kind of you know childish happiness. It is supposed to command, you know, the sigh of the old, of the aged, of the mature. Who knows that? To whom much is given, much is required. It's not a small thing to be part of these descriptions of the spirit, this land of the East. The second thing I want to say, I told you Moses is my picture, but... Let me say certain things that perhaps if I don't say them now, I may lose them. That while we are talking about survival, and we are talking about revival, much has been said about forging. People have come to this altar to make resolutions with God and to allow the dealings of God to come upon their life. Wonderful experience. But it's a word of wisdom I want to bring this day to everyone. And this word of wisdom are kind of last minute pictures. Because by tomorrow this meeting will be over. Whatever was said, however you prayed, however you cried, there is a word of wisdom I want to leave for you. Please, before you revive anybody, survive. Survive before you revive. Survive by yourself, for yourself, before you revive. There's a huge percentage, there's a huge percentage of things that have to do with your life that does not relate to helping anybody, delivering anybody, saving anybody, but to be sure that first of all you are secured by yourself and uh, there are lines you come. Where, whether it's your brother, it's your mother, it's your friend, it is first yourself before anybody. There is the story, I will, I will tell you a short story, and that story is this. There's a town called Ida in Igala land. And there are, there are trade, there's so much trade between Igala land and Onicha. One of those trades is normally across the river Niger. There are these boats that are like ferry, they call them barges. That our people will normally carry, you know, plenty of palm oil, plenty of foodstuff, plenty of so much. Bring them to Onicha and carry certain things from Onicha. Survive before you revive. One particular time, a very big badge left Ida on the way to this Onicha. They will normally begin to travel in the night. And maybe somewhere uh, in the morning hours before, uh, you know, the sun rises somewhere, they will arrive this Onicha. I think they came to Onicha. They did their enterprise. They got their goods from Onicha. They began to come back to Ida in the middle of the river, far from land, far from everybody, far from any hope. Suddenly, the, the, the badge caught fire. And as it caught fire, you know, it was carrying diesel, plenty of diesel in, uh, in, in drums. So the ship officer, I think, began to pour away the diesel, trying to see how to help the badge. Unfortunately, there was nothing he could do. That thing burned. Goods were lost. People fell into the river. He survived. Before you revive. Some people began to die. Because they could not swim. Some people began to tread water. To tread water is different from swimming. You are not going anywhere. But you know how to keep yourself on top of the water. And many were swimming. 
the pathetic story of this experience is that in that in that in, in, i mean in that company there was a mother and her daughter and they were caught in this in this environment where they were in the middle of the deep far from land far from help far from anybody and you see this was the experience their mother was a mighty swimmer but the daughter could not swim And hear the voice of the spirit. If you are a swimmer here and your daughter doesn't know how to swim, teach your daughter how to swim. And you know the swimming I'm talking about is not talking about swimming as an exercise. I'm talking about navigating the rivers of the spirit and being able to carry the strength of grace that has brought you thus far. But let me leave that story alone. I mean, let me leave that, that piece alone and let me continue with the story. Right in the middle of the river with all the strength of a mother, this woman carried her child and began to swim. And as they were swimming and going, the woman will get tired. And then they will stop in the middle of the river. And she will be the one to hold the, womb, the daughter and be treading the water. They are not moving anywhere. After she rests for a while, she will carry the daughter. But Ida was miles away. She did not know what to do. Those that were alone were still swimming. They were still going. The woman at one point started getting tired. She looked at the daughter. The daughter looked at her. She didn't know what to do. At home, there were about four other children waiting for mama. Right here, there was one daughter right in the middle of the river who cannot swim. She cannot swim in the face of this deluge that came upon them. And the story is so touching. Because the sacrifice came from the mouth of the daughter. At one point, the daughter looked at the mother and said, Mama, you know how home is. I know how your heart cries for me. I know you are the one that gave birth to me. But Mama, if the two of us die here, what will happen to my siblings? Hey, the mother began to cry. She was still holding the girl. But she knew that she was losing breath. She knew her shoulders were getting weak. She knew that if she dies in this river, there is no custodian. There is no helper. There is no uncle. There is no aunt that will take responsibility. Oh, the voice of that girl was trying to say, Mama, leave me. Mama, leave me. Mama, leave me. Mama, leave me. If you die here, if both of us die, what will happen to my siblings? Under the heat of that pressure, at one point, the woman allowed pity, reasoning, calculation, feelings to give way. And this is the wisdom. Survive first before you revive anybody. She looked at her, at her child. The child was weeping. The child was crying. It was at the point when the child lifted up one hand and did like this. Mama, goodbye. Mama, bye-bye. That she released the girl and did bye-bye. The water carried the girl and she swam back, surviving alone, but to take care of posterity, to take care of children. And I'm asking you, in the face of what is coming upon this earth, can you swim? Can you survive? Can you tread the water all by yourself? Emeka's story is a very wonderful story. Now, as soon as I began to read that, um, I hear Emeka, several things began to happen in my spirit. This man is a survivalist. You will discover that the story of this man is not so much about the story of how he helped people, but it's a, the story of how he came by, how he came through, how the jaws of death, how every deluge, every barrage from the kingdom of darkness could not bring him down. That is a survival. It is better to learn how to survive first than to be looking for how to revive. If I follow America's story, the, the meeting will change. 
But Rebecca has spoken to us that whatever is after you, there is a corridor of possibility if you are a survivor. If you have the arsenals of grace, if you have the arsenals of the spirit of God. And you see, even though this is a minister's story, uh, a minister's leadership retreat, one of the things I cherish whenever I come here is to begin to dissect the crowd. And I'm aware that it's not everybody here that is a pastor. I'm aware that it's not everybody that is here that is an evangelist. I'm aware that traders are here. I'm aware that military officers are here. And I'm aware that there are mothers here, fathers here, simple housewife. And America is a picture of someone who may not necessarily be an ordained pastor. He is just a Christian. He is just a Christian. And by the things he has spoken this night, America told us that in integrity, the corridors of millions are possible. You don't have to be anything. You only need to have God. America told us that even though there were troubles, he did not call the name of any particular pastor that came to pray for him. But I heard him over and over say, we did not sleep. That thing entered my spirit. We did not sleep. It was not the prescription of a prophet. And I'm telling you, that capacity that he had by himself and with his precious wife, to be able to keep the night in the day of battle, that is the spirit of a survivor. Moses is my picture, but that story was too compelling. While he was talking, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw somebody sitting in his parlor. There was a television showing, but he was a blind man. There was such a compulsion in that testimony that, that has brought this utterance that I'm bringing before you. That one of the capacities learned from the story, learn from the story, learn from the story. What I'm saying, learn from the story. As I'm looking at everybody, not everybody is a puppet man. Not everybody is a Bible dissector. Not everybody here is a prophet. Not everybody here is an apostle. Even from the questions people ask, you know that there are toddlers here. You know that there are growing people here. And I'm telling you that yes, there is a portion called reviving. But the first thing is surviving. And one of the kids of reviver, I mean of survivor, that our brother demonstrated, demonstrated, and I want you to write it in your spirit and collect it as pictures to carry home, is when he said, a voice spoke in my heart. Something dropped in my ear. I perceived, and the question that the Spirit of God began to ask in my heart, as I watched that man sitting before that television, television is showing pictures, but the man cannot see. Maybe probably he can hear. You see, how to survive? There are some of you that are here. The voice that came to Emeka has entered your house a million times. But the frequency to hear, mm -mm. the pictures that he saw in his spirit has appeared on your television. But when your television is disconnected from the decoder, how will you decode? I'm sure that this testimony will be part of what we'll be using to pray. Because the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord made them both. There are testimonies upon testimonies of people in our testament who for years that for ears that hear and for eyes that see, they have survived. One of my young men called Solomon, little boy, he was standing doing evangelism or counseling or talking to somebody. And that person happens to be a lady. I don't know how to, you know, nobody can forge an ear for you. The one that forges the ear, the one that forges eye beyond this natural eye, the name of that person is the Lord. Where Solomon was standing, talking with this girl in Abuja. What most people ignore and they can hear, which is that silent voice, that distilling, that distilling signal that has produced men that have sharp antenna. It's not a noise. It's an awareness. An awareness came to him. My uh, Solomon, shift from where you are standing. And he shifted. And as he shifted and stood, the girl that was talking to him, probably interested in the discussion, shifted along with him. Two minutes after he shifted, a vehicle lost control. Everybody that was standing on that place, that vehicle cleared them. One died instantly. They took the rest of them to the hospital. As simple as this may be, 
our survival kit as we leave this camp is that if you are deaf, you won't survive. If you are blind, you won't survive. We have come to one mountain where as we hear from this altar, we, we will need to begin to beg God and say, Lord, before I leave this camp, what this brother said, that in the midst of my trouble, I heard. In the midst of my trouble, an idea. In the midst of my trouble, something distilled into my spirit. That Lord, you will make me spirit sensitive. You will quicken my ear again. There will be no confusion about thus saith the Lord. For a little child, as little as Samuel, there was a voice of God. If you spoke to Samuel, Lord out of mercy. It was not because Samuel did anything. Samuel did not do anything. Mercy just located him. Someone we need to say, Lord, make me here. Time we fail me to talk about the humility of this brother. From million to Akara. From million to Akara. Not looking whether anybody is looking at me. Or what will they think? Or they are laughing at me. But it was a corridor he must pass through. Instruction will always be your life. And I perceive there are some of you that are here. That that's what is hurting you. What God is asking you to do now. To enter the next level. It's like leaving millions to sell Akara. But when you look at the instruction. And you remember Boniface. And you remember Okonkwa and your friends. You remember the club where you used to, you to make, uh, to do contribution. Your obedience is halted by your pride. Hmm. The calm he exhibited, you are owing $148 million. You are $148,000. You are owing one hundred and so. You are owing $6 million. And you are walking in the corridors of a calm that says, Be still and know that I am God. These are, these are arsenals of grace that we need to put together. I congratulated the wife of Emeka in the course of the testimony. Yes. I congratulated that wife. Amen. Are you with me at all? All right. So let me be the only one to talk. And I'm praying for those that are not married. May the Lord give you a good wife. May the Lord give you a good husband. And those of you that are married, whatever it is that makes marriage to be like hell, I pray that God will bring intervention in the name of Jesus Christ. What Emeka did, placing those pictures on the walls of his house, and standing and speaking with one voice of faith continuously, not changing his mind and believing God and watching God honor that word. These are pictures that I feel that I will insist that you keep in your spirit. Please keep those pictures in your spirit. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Now, let me begin to knock on Moses, this survivalist and this revivalist. Numbers chapter 31, quickly. I'm going to the end. I'm taking us to one end. Come back to some beginnings. Numbers chapter 31, quickly. I'm taking from verse, I'm reading from verse 48, 49, and probably verse 50 only. Numbers 31. If you are there, I want all of us to read together. One, two, let's go. Please, I want to hear your voice like you are hearing my voice. One, two, go. And the officers which were over thousands of the hosts and captains of thousands and captains of hundreds came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, 
Thy servant have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge. There lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, what every man had gotten of jewels, of gold, of chains, and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, what you have just read is a, is the test, is a testimonial of the ministry of Moses. Now, permit me to say that between when God started handling Moses and this particular time, about a hundred and so many years have passed. Or about a hundred years. Let me be safe. But at this height, there's this testimonial of Moses, the man of God. He began as one man. He began as one man. Don't forget. Remember the first thing I said, you survive first before you revive. He began as one man, but at the height of, his, of this ministry, there were certain, there were certain provisions that God had made. The Bible talks about captains. He had captains. The Bible talks about officers. He had officers. Ministry from one man had grown into a nation. Advice from God has brought up certain setups. There were officers available to be sent. There were men running. There were administrators. There were people under Moses. And Moses, the man that had the oversight. I don't know whether this is an everyday thing, but the Bible decided to capture this testimonial, talking about survival within the camp and within the people. He said, please check the people for me. They came out of war. Time will fail me to talk about officers and captains. They are all necessary. Moses had warriors. He also had oversight people, people who have time to check. They may not go to war, but they are careful, they are meticulous, they have time, they follow up, they ask questions, they nurse, he had them. He also had men that had the faces of lion, men that can fight. But at one particular time, he said, please help me check. They just came out of war and, uh, you know, they won the war, of course. But see, of particular interest for me is this testimony that when he began to ask, please check. Anybody there? They said no. Not any young man. They said no. One of the women, oh, those in the camp are safe. We're talking about those that even went to war. Not one man died. Bullets flew, but it didn't touch us. Arrows flew, but it didn't touch us. We fought. We brought them down. But they didn't bring one of us down. What that tells me, what that tells me is that the war they went to is not a crowd war. It's a war of Human beings that were taught one by one how to survive. So much that even if we are going as 10, all of us are expert people in surviving. We are also men of war. We are men that learn how to win. And I want to submit to men of God and to submit to myself and to submit to all of us that being trained, being brought up to survive by yourself, which is your personal revival, being trained to go out and revive nations, which is revival. These two things you can't play with. But like I said, survive first before you revive. Our Lord Moses, did anybody die? Mm -mm. Nobody died. Everybody survived. And I think for this revival that God is bringing to the land of the rising sun, this is not just a team. That is the target of God. Because wars will arise. It will be regional wars. It will be war against the principalities and powers that have the siege of this country because the proper land of the rising sun. This is your hour. I can't remember the first time I came to Milray, but that was one of the first utterances that the Lord brought, which I have forgotten, but he brought again. It is your hour to bless the story of revival again. It is your hour to carry the church to war. And there is none of us here that is not implicated. From little children to young people, there is none of us here that is not implicated. From adults to old men. 
But see, the testimony that I want you to carry as a picture, that this war, this revival, this fight, this challenge of bringing the kingdom of God upon Igbo land and, of, and upon the nations of the world, it's not supposed to be a war that will render casualties amongst us. None of us is supposed to die under the sword of the enemy. None of us is supposed to die in the heat of the battle. All of us are supposed to come forth with a testimony. A testimony of survival. A testimony of revival. But listen to me. This is your survival. If you are here by reason of all that you have heard, all that you have eaten, and whatever God is saying, you have come to a place of your personal resolve. And the grace of God has visited you. And you are able to, to tell yourself, there is nothing that can bring me down. Sin cannot bring me down. Sickness cannot bring me down. The devil cannot bring me down. There is no village that can swallow me. There is no land that can kill me. If you train to that point, then this meeting will have succeeded. The matters of how do I survive? We see it in the ingredients of all that has been coming. Said, your personal survivor is cardinal. Oh Lord, keep me from falling. Oh Lord, keep me from compromise. Oh Lord, keep me from sin. Oh Lord, let no land eat me. Let me become the desire of every nation, every place I entered. Let it be that because I came there, the sun rose. Let it be that because I came there, the wilderness began to bring forth water. Let it be that because I came there, the land began to understand that Jesus is around. Let it be because I came there, as I blew the trumpet, the heavens opened, and revival began to come down. Can I ask everybody under the sound of my voice to listen to me? The statement I made just now has no exemption. I'm not talking to, I'm not talking to some people. I'm talking to every head, every head, every head. If we are 5,000, there's a hovering grace that is over this meeting right now. There's a spirit of jealousy. The Lord is counting to ensure that not one is taken. He's counting to ensure that not one is lost. A little feeble one should become like David. God is looking for, for, for people of Igbo extraction. And permit me, if you're not Igbo, you're like me. I'm looking for other, others that are here amongst every nation. The solid oaks and cedars that are not breakable by any storm will arise. They lack it, not one man. Not one person. Before I push forward from this lane of thought, hoping that you are listening to me, it is yet but one day we will go home. Very soon we will close this meeting. Can I beg you that as good as our passion i fell down flat on my face i wept i cried i shook i made a decision somebody prayed for me as good as they are there is this maturity that is called the ma the ability to say no when necessary that does not come from shaking it does not come from falling it does not come from tears it comes from revelation and understanding it comes from the fact that you so know that well the way i am where god has brought me it is too late for me to go back. Please, emotions will not work after here. Mm -mm 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 it's not an immense thing. You need to understand. Emotion. He, 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 God, God, God. Yes. Whenever God is moving, emotions are permitted. Tears are permitted. Tears have coerced my eyes over certain realities I saw. Not that I wept, but you see, glistening my eyes. But I have come to learn by experience that when you begin to face the reality of life, when we share the grace and you are back to the village, back to, to wherever you came from, back to your, to, your, to, your, to your workplace, I want to submit to you that it is not your shaking. It is not your tears. It is your resolve. And that resolve is somewhere inside. I can't point to it. It's your decision. Perhaps this story might, might help somebody. A man of God was preaching. He made an altar call. Only two people responded to that altar call. Only two. Out of everybody, only two. Well, the man of God accepted it like that. But the two that God showcased, 
Perhaps he restricted every other person so that the drama can be, can be open. So that they can evaluate these two people after some time. As soon as they came to the altar, one threw himself, himself on the ground. Bah! He was crying. He was weeping. He was shedding tears. Very good. Very wonderful. Please, we, we will not discredit the brokenness that comes from the Holy Spirit. We will not discredit the tears that people share, share at the altar. We will not discredit the shakings that come. But you see, this story must become your wisdom. Why this one was breaking and crying? There was one that was standing very quietly at the altar. Now, after the man allowed them to stay for a while, he said, now please calm down. Let us pray. Can you begin to say, Lord Jesus? When he says, say, Lord Jesus. The other one said, Lord Jesus. This was, hey, Lord Jesus. And in that tone, he made his confession. He made his resolution. This one said the same thing, standing calmly. I don't know why. But you see, it's making me to give you a picture of what I'm saying. That they stood for six months. At the end of six months, the one that was falling, the one that was shouting, the one that was twisting, backslided. The one that didn't shed any tear, that stood maturely and was counting to himself as a man. And if you are a woman, I mean if you are a woman, like a woman, an adult woman. Haba, at this point of life, I need to take final decisions. We are but one day to the end of this program. You have wept. You have rolled. You have cried. But hear the word of the Lord. Take an adult decision. Take an adult decision because you will be face to face with pressure. You will be face to face with temptation. You will be face to face with aloneness. You will be face to face with a minority position where you are alone surrounded by 20 Muslims. Those decisions are not taken emotionally. They are not taken when you shake. You rehearse to your spirit. You swear to your heart. You make your decision. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Our target this night, like I said, is that at the end of it all, we'll be able to say, not one was lacking. Not one died. Not one backslid. May the Lord carry us there. In the mighty name of Jesus. But again, let me rewind and carry us back. Please follow me back and forth and try to understand me. What we have used to make this analysis is the story of one man that started as one man. He started as one man until he was able to bring out a nation. And as he brought out this nation, he was able to have spiritual formation. He was able to have workers, people working under him. The man Moses. I'd like to draw us back a little to this one survivalist who suddenly became who suddenly became a nation? Who had these officers? This Moses, who was able to come to this point where he had this testimony, not one died. Not, not one was lacking. I'd like us to use him as a case study of the kind of pictures we paint and then we'll begin to pray. Lord Holy Spirit, Open our eyes to see. Now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Everybody is born into life. Not choosing his or her own season. Anything you are born into, that is what you met. There are people who are in the grave now. They were born in this Nigeria. They never heard of anything called Boko Haram. In their season, there was no Boko Haram. In their season, there was no trouble. But they had their own challenge. In our season, we are born into certain troubles that are peculiar 
to our own trouble. But let's look at Moses. When Moses was born, his father was a slave. His mother was a slave. His sister was a slave. Everybody in his tribe was a slave. We're talking about this survivalist who suddenly became a revivalist, Moses. Who brought out a nation. As far as life, opportunity was concerned, there was nothing like that. In the time of Moses, there was a spiritual figure that is the figure of the adversary of every destiny. A tyrant king called Pharaoh who had made a decree that every male child that is born must be thrown into a river infested with crocodile. Let crocodile eat them or let the river carry them. Moses a survival is because that river ate many children. Mothers wept as they saw their little boys dying in the river. And this was the plan of Pharaoh. You know that in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, in life, progenity, prosperity, name, lineage, nations are not reckoned unto women. It is unto men. So the target of this man is that if I kill all the boys, very soon, there will be no, there will be no Israeli born. All these, Egypt, all, these, all these Israeli women will soon become the wives of Egypt. And then we we'll have one nation without trouble. We can't have a divided Egypt. We can't have Israelites here. And just like what we watch happening in our country, and it looks as if there, is, there are some background plans. Some background plans to swallow us. To bring a culture that is, that is not our culture. To impose a religion. Just like we are threatened. That is, that is how it is. From generation to generation. Tyrants arise. Fighters arise. People that want to kill revival. People that are enemies of the church. That was the situation. But when Moses was born. The, le the only history I heard about his father was that a man took a woman. Both of them are from Levi. The, the man conceived and gave birth to a son. The story of the man died. The first handlers of Moses' life were women. And that's significant. I'd like you to follow me. The role of the father of Moses is not mentioned in those, in those preliminary, infantile stage of Moses' life. And that is very figurative. Moses came out of a maternity. He entered into the hand of his mother. It was his mother. It was his mother. The Bible says that while the king was raging and looking for who to kill, Moses had a mother. Who saw that? There can be a king on the throne. Who wants to kill children? But this my child is not for any crocodile. This my child is not for the sword of Pharaoh. And by faith, the Bible says, he was able to keep this child for three months. What she did in those three months, we are not told. While everybody is not a child, I like to pray this prayer for everybody. Lift up your two hands. Now, I pray for you. Whether you are beginning or at whatever stage you are, may the Lord give you sufficient, effective, and unique tutors and governors in whose hand you will survive. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe with the whole of my soul, if it was for that man, they would have killed Moses. There is something about anything that God created female that is akin to the picture of what it means to nurture the sucklings that are coming up because no man becomes a giant at once and that is why I'm x-raying Moses. In our land, there is what we call the bushfire. 
They used to set the bush on fire during Hamatan. And sometimes when the bush has burnt and it's over, and you are passing through the forest looking for animals, one of the one of the one of the, the piteous sight you will see is there's a bird called the partridge. Do you know partridge here? Yeah? They used to say, Kofia, 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 in the bush. Now you will come to a place. The fire has passed. You will still see a patrick sitting down, burnt by fire. Her eggs are under her. The patrick refused to run because of fire. If there must be survival in the church, your tables must arise. If there must be survival in the church, people that have the heart of a mother who are ready to nurse, who are ready to die, must arise else. Some people who are tender, some people who are infantile, crocodiles will eat them. Every disciple, every pastor, every mother, every father, everyone under the sound of my voice, the Moses that said, I lack not at the beginning. He understood that he also survived because there was somebody that cared. Sometimes in trying to nurture, in trying to bring up, so that somebody who has no leg at this point and cannot stand who is a baby, who will soon take responsibility for himself, but has to be nursed at that stage. Sometimes in order to nurse them, there are many losses that will occur. In Kenya, a woman went to the riverside to wash. She went to wash. And you see, she, was, she had a little baby. You know what she did? She put some little pieces of cloth on the ground. Put the baby there. Covered the baby. Went to the riverside. And you know, Start beating stone with uh, cloth. And are you are you familiar with those things? Eh? Now washing and washing, washing. You know, as she was washing those clothes, suddenly her maternal instinct. This thing that will make a disciple have to call a disciple suddenly say, "Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you?" So that survival will be that nobody dies. Survival will be that no sister backslides. Survival will be that none, no, none of the ones that the Lord has given us we will lose to carelessness. Her maternal instinct suddenly came on her. Now as she turned, she saw her baby in the mouth of a crocodile. Don't miss my point. My point is that there are people at a stage of life. We're talking about surviving. And we're talking about revival. Sincerely, they will need to toss and govern us to first help them to be able to stand. Like Yochebed stood for little Moses, who now become, became a commander of captains, a commander of officers. They start, Moses started from somewhere. When this woman turned, she saw the crook, her baby in the mouth of a crocodile. Nobody was there. <laughs> Hayata Magasanta. See a woman, touch her child, sense will not be there. The woman flew, ran after the crocodile. Already the crocodile was almost halfway into the water. You know what the woman did? She went straight to the mouth of the crocodile, pushed her hand, opened the mouth of the crocodile, by force took her child, but the crocodile brought you know, brought those heavy jaws. Brought those heavy jaws on the hand of the woman. Removed the hand of the woman. The crocodile went with the hand, but the woman went with her baby. She survived. And her baby survived at a price. Now listen to me. Now I perceive that the spirit of God is saying there are territories you will enter. That no man has entered. For you to raise infants, there will be crocodiles here and there. For you to battle and take babies out of the mouth of crocodile. And establish a fellowship in that umweke or umu whatever. 
that has defied darkness all the days and all the generations of time. I hear the spirit of grace say, I should tell you that in trying to raise a community of revival, in trying to raise sons and daughters, little, little, little lambs for the kingdom of God, you could get wounded, but you will survive. And some of you should get ready. Get ready to be like your cabbage. Some of these little ones who others may despise, who may be looking like nothing, will be counted among your jewels when you enter the better land. They will become part of the officers you will raise. There is no body that is like a man you raise. Hired people don't work revival. When you begin to pay the price of raising children by yourself, catering for children by yourself, scars on the right, scars on the left, the scars of battle, the scars of battle, if at the end of it all they are able to stand, you will have a host. And for some of you, this battle may just be the battle of your home. I'm describing. And we may not be able to get all into that. Everybody that handled Moses <laughs> was a woman in those infantile stage. Not because women only are created to raise people, but I believe it's a prophetic picture of the kind of heart you need to handle babes, to handle suckling. To handle upcomings. To handle those that need to be helped. After three months. She could no more hide this baby. And as she could no more hide this baby. She didn't know what to do. Why I commensurate with the story of our brother. Is that my heart tells me. It's not written clearly in the Bible. That your kebed came to this point. What do I do? I can't stop this baby from crying. What do I do? Lift up your right hand. Everybody. Say with me at your loudest voice. Oh Lord. What, what do I do? Shout it like you mean it. Oh Lord. What do I do? Say it for the third time. Oh Lord. What do I do? Can you shout it again and say oh Lord. What do I do? Pray in tongues for one minute. Like a tetelegeset. Put your hand up. Just raise your voice. Oh Lord. I'm not hearing you like I want to hear you. Oh Lord. At this junction. At this point. What do I do? Let us Awatata. All over this camp. If you have a voice. Kalabo say. Karatanata. Eleketele. Watatata. I don't know whether your voice is in the atmosphere. It's like you are doing shu 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 shu. Karaba na katayato na gefe. Pharaoh is coming. His soldiers are coming. They want to kill my child. They want to kill the brethren. Lord, my little disciples. Ayaba katanda gabra de kosa. Lord, that girl that just repented three days ago. As if she's going back to the as if as if as if Pharaoh wants to carry this child. What do I do? Enter Makatalia. What a key. Pastors ask the Lord, what do I do? Contos paretona caprade compasse. Imola katanda gabrada. If you can pray in tongues, can you increase it a little? Can you make it louder than what you are doing? From your belly, from your bowel. Oh Lord. What do I do? I'm going to be releasing an apostolic word now. So please pray and not before I pray the prayer. Awata bababalaka magada yatanda gabara. I'm a little boy. I'm a little girl. They say I should bribe. They say I should sleep before they give me a job. My father is threatening me. He's asking me to part from the house. The rage of Pharaoh is all over. Oh Lord, what do I do? A maker story is my confirmation. Now I want to pray for you. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now lift up your two hands, everybody. Under this grace, I lift up my voice to the eternal father who owns this atmosphere. Under the labor and the groaning from the crucible of the altar that better this meeting, in agreement with the eldership of this place, I pray for your ears. I pray for your eyes. Anytime you raise up your mouth and you say, Lord, what do I do? Let there be light in the mighty name of Jesus. Anytime you lift your eyes to the hills, from whence comes your help? My pictures appear in your heart. My voices appear in your spirit. My light appear in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to pray for you. Don't be slow in heart to obey. You may hear, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. Don't marry him, don't marry him, don't marry him. Run, 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 run. And like I make a said, you may hear, enter the church, press me for seven days. Whatever instruction the Lord gives, I pray for tenacity. I pray for strength. May the spirit of obedience swallow you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now sit down and hear me. One of the great things that God has done for me is that I'm conscious. And I believe that consciousness is more strength than activity. I'm conscious of the fact that this night is a night. One precious night. The only night before the last night. And these instructions are precious. Oh Lord, what do I do? And to your kebed, the wife of Imran, an idea came. What was that idea? Even though it's not written like that in the Bible. Let me say the word of the Lord came to her. Let me say like our brother, an idea came to her. Make an ark of ball rushes. Ball rushes. In my language, we call ball rushes Igbo. Even though we don't have ball rushes in Nigeria. But by the time you go to the riverside, you discover some tall, 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 tall grasses. They are a kind of, they are reeds. The Lord told her to weave these reeds into a thick, small boat, an ark. The same Lord gave her an idea that go and carry kolta, put kolta on fire, let it melt. When that kolta has melted, carry brush, begin to brush inside the boat, allow it to cool down, paint it again. Allow it to cool down, paint it again. Allow it to cool down, paint it again, and paint it again. It was the Lord leading this woman. This woman, this woman, this woman, this, this tutor, this governor, this woman that says my child will not be eaten by crocodile. And as she was painting, painting that thing, you know, not in a hurry. She painted the first layer, painted the second layer until outside you see reeds. Inside you see a plaster, like you plaster a house. Not too heavy, but you see a plaster of, co of coal tar inside inside the boat. When the thing dried up, I was not there. These are my pictures. Yokebe now carried a, 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 a bucket of water, poured it inside the ark, and lifted it up. Looked under, it was not leaking. Looked under, it was not leaking. She now saw that that ark was waterproof. Water cannot enter. You know, that was the wisdom of God. And I'd like you to hear me. So that in the day of your visitation, you will understand the wisdom that comes from on high. You know, I have been to Egypt physically. And the guy that was taking me around in Egypt called Mina. He spoke to me that there is something that is not in the Bible, but they know. That the crocodile in the Nile, they eat human flesh like fire. How much more the, the body of a, of, a, of a little baby? But there is something about the crocodile. They hate the smell of bulrushes. 
They don't like the smell of that grass. They don't stay near that place. So the Lord gave this woman a wisdom. She made that ark. And after she made that ark, she sealed that ark because the other enemy was water. Her enemy was crocodile and water. How will crocodile not eat my child? How will water not swallow my child? The Lord said, ball rushes and, 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 and pitch. I'm crying in my heart. You see, in the journey that is before us, the journey that is before us, Great in the man he spoke about reading, 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 reading. Yes, sir. You, you. Reading simply means digging the well of wisdom. Digging the well of wisdom. Digging the well of wisdom. That's one side to it. But I'd like you to know that there's a stream of, gra of grace that is called the word of wisdom. That has nothing to do with reading. It has nothing to do with reading. But you are entitled to ask for certain gifts. And where Nigeria is now, there is no father, no mother, no pastor that should not definitely ask and say, Lord, please give me that stream that is called a word of wisdom. What is a word of wisdom? A word of wisdom is something that comes suddenly. You didn't learn it. You didn't plan it. It's an idea. It's almost like magic. It's something that nobody ever thought about. What did I call it? Talk to me. Let me hear you now. Shout it. Let me hear you. What did I call it now? A word of wisdom. A word of wisdom. When Jesus said, they will bring you before kings. They will bring you before uh, rulers. And uh, they will be asking you several questions, threatening you to say one thing, one thing or the other. Don't be afraid on that day. He said, I will give you... Come on, listen. Listen, listen, listen. He said, I will give you a mouth huh, and a wisdom that your enemy cannot gain say nor resist. Now I'm talking about the word of wisdom. I believe that what came to Yochebed, the wife of Imran, was not just an idea. It was a word of wisdom from the Lord in a capacity as the pastor of Moses so that Moses can survive the wrath of Pharaoh. And I'm saying to you as a father, I'm saying to you as a mother, there is no calculation from your culture. There is no way your father brought you up or your mother brought you up that you are able to that you are going to be able to preserve your generation. Remember your cabinet that in the day of her of her adversity, when she said, Lord, what shall I do? A word of wisdom came. Your cabinet was able to craft something that crocodile doesn't come near and water does not enter. Are you with me at all? We are talking about survivor. Survive first. But like I gave you the picture of this woman. When the waters came, her daughters could not swim. Don't be like that. Ask for grace. Ask for wisdom. Ask for, for, for light on how you can survive. How your children can survive. How your family can survive. How your church can survive. How those under you can survive. A word of wisdom from the Lord told her. Create an ark. Put slime. Put, put, put pitch and slime. So that water will not enter. Hear me anyone that is alive and is still hearing. It does not make sense. It does not make sense. It does not make sense. Oh Lord, it does not make sense. How can it make sense? For me to carry my baby. To the very waters where they say they should kill. How can it make sense? And I'm here to let you know that sometimes when the word of wisdom comes from the Lord asking you to do something, when you view it from your sense point, what God is asking you to do will negate your personal wisdom, will negate your personal thinking, will negate whatever you feel is the better thing to do. But when Yochebed saw she couldn't, and it became clear to her that this is the next action. She took that baby. And she brought that baby to the very Niles. Where crocodiles eat babies. And she went to the ball rushes, the flags by the riverside. And she placed that ark there. Threw it to the Lord and just left it there. 
If Moses was three months, Aaron must be like four years. I'm the one, I'm the one even adding. It means Miriam must be like six years. Let's add it to her, maybe eight years at the most. Follow my mathematics. They had three children. The first born was Miriam. The second born was Moses, was uh, Aaron. And the third born, just coming, was three months. So if the baby is three months, no matter how the family planning is, so, the next one should be like four years. The next one should be like six years old. We are talking about survival. Surviving for revival. And look at me. The person that this woman asked to watch the baby, let it challenge you. Was not an 18 year old girl. The person that mother said, Watch over your brother, watch over your brother, don't live here. Was a six year old. There is this labor for survival, and I'm trying to paint pictures. So that we go back home and walk. We go back home and take responsibility. Oh my God. My little teaching, my little understanding tells me that if a child, everybody hear me please, be with me as we learn together. If a child is two years old, you can't teach that child more than two minutes. Psychologist, am I right? After two minutes, the attention span of a two-year-old child is over. Allow him to play and talk again. If a boy is five years, five years old, talk to him for only five minutes. After five minutes, let him play a little. Call him back. If you keep him more than five minutes, you will see him doing his leg on the ground like this and throwing his hand. He's not listening to you. His attention span is over. Let him play a little and then bring him back. If a child is 10, year, 10 years old, 10 minutes. By the time he adults and he becomes 15 years, he can build more attention span. So my matter is, I don't know what your bed did to this six-year-old girl. They told her, don't leave here. Stay here and watch. We are talking about survival. And the picture I'm painting is, look, whatever you do with yourself, if your children are not carried along, survival will end with you. But Miriam stood her ground. Her young mind wanted to play. Her young mind wanted to, her young mind wanted to jump. But there was something that God had done to this little girl. That when her mother said, here you stand, you must not move. Miriam, the son of Amram and Jochebed, stood as a faithful watcher over the little destiny of her helpless brother. Will it not be right to, to, for me to ask you, where are your children? We are talking about survival. Will they survive what is coming? There are some of you here. The only way you can ask your child to sit down is to give the child a phone with cartoon. That's all. Sit down, Junior. He said, Mommy. Sit down, Junior. He said, Eh? Sit down, Junior. He said, Eh? eh, eh. Mommy, it's Junior, come back. He said, Eh? And your visitor is a dignified visitor. You're trying to sit the boy down. The boy can, you say, okay, come and, come and watch cartoon. Come and watch cartoon. And the boy will come and carry cartoon. The quietness is generated by cartoon to distract the boy. You are losing that child. You are losing that child. There are some of you that are here. No cane has ever touched your child. One. So the child does not know the dread of a father. The child does not know the discipline of a mother. And I'm asking you, if you survive alone, will your child survive? The man to whom testimony was given, we lack not one man. That was the family he came from. One mother that is a strong disciplinarian, yet a lover of destiny. As Miriam was standing there, listen to me, everybody. Listen to me quickly. Please, give me your attention. As Miriam was standing there, the Lord who knows the, list, the, the Lord who knows the written destiny of this boy, 
That even though this boy is a little child, he is the one that will shake the foundation of Pharaoh. He is the one that will lead Israel. The Lord now began to, uh, to, to, to organize a connection. And that connection was that there was a princess, the daughter of Pharaoh, coming to bath. And as that woman was coming to bath, again, women, she was a woman, escorted by women. And then she now saw the ark. And as she saw the ark, it was still a woman that she sent to go and pick the ark. One of the maids. The maid came and carried the ark and brought it out. They saw Hebrew blanket. And for almost four or five hours, this baby had not sucked breast. That, I'm sure that was what attracted attention. <laughs> Continuously, 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 the Bible said the baby wept. Even though it was her father that decreed that they should kill, as soon as she saw the baby, heaven did like this. Compassion entered the heart of the woman. She said, oh, this is one of the Hebrew, Hebrew, this is one of the Hebrew, Hebrew sons, Hebrew boys. Hey, what a fine boy. What a fine boy. What a fine boy. Out of the Bible, according to tradition, this particular girl, this particular lady, in her own experience, she was a barren woman. Her breasts were dry. She had never sucked a child. So immediately she saw this child. The instinct of owning a baby came upon her. Hey, she said, Kai, maybe it's the gods that brought this child to me. While she was still wondering what to do, please look at me. Look at me again and again. A girl of eight years old at the most. A girl of six years old. An idea came to her. This matter of something coming that our brother Emeka triggered. We must hook it as one of the arsenals of survival. The girl began to take one step, two step, two step, three step. Audacity. Can I digress a little? In my ministry, we used to use this story to teach confidence. Confidence is not pride. Inferiority is satanic. What anybody defines you can reduce you. In the whole of Egypt, everybody that is born Jew, Israel, no Jew that time, Israel, Israelite, son of Jacob, you are called a slave. The opposite of a slave is a princess. Within the corridors of protocol, a slave is not supposed to approach his princess. If, I, if soldiers are there, the next thing that girl could see is her head flying. Who are you? I don't know what Yokebed did. I don't know what she did to Miriam. To this little girl who sees oppression every day. Who sees them kicking the father and saying, you nobody, pick this and pick know what your cabin was able to inject in the Hebrew spirit of this girl. That this girl though a slave took bold step and stood before the princess and said excuse me ma do you need somebody to nurse this child? That's a word of wisdom. And the compassion that God sent was so overwhelming. The princess forgot that she was a princess. The princess suddenly forgot that this was a slave girl. And that princess, I said, exactly, 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 exactly. Say, excuse me, I'm coming. And that girl ran home, gave her report. Mama pretend, oh, don't say my baby, my baby. Oh. If you say my baby, the way I'm seeing the eye of that woman, you will never see your child. She came and said, my princess, good afternoon. This guy said, you look, you need services. He said, yes. This is the baby that the gods brought for me. Can you nurse the baby? How we pay you for it? He said, no problem. But underneath the dress, the breasts were swollen. Underneath the, underneath the dress, the breasts were paining. Because for hours, that baby had not sucked. The mother does not know where to expel. So with endurance, say, yes, my princess. Anything you say, I will do for you. Say, I'll pay you. Yes, sir. Yes, my princess. Yes, my princess. That baby came back. 
And soldiers were notified. There's a boy that the gods brought to the daughter of Pharaoh. He's in one, 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 one house. Somebody is hired there on pay. Don't go near the house. We're talking about survival. That day, there are mothers that were weeping. He, 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 he. They threw my baby into the river. Crocodile chop him. There were scores and scores and scores of family whose boys went under that water, eaten raw by crocodile. But there was this woman called Yochebed, a living custodian of grace, a tutor and a governor, a disciple, a lover of infants, one that will not allow any to be lost. She ran home. The baby was still crying. As soon as he brought the, the baby home, no need to press. Wah, 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 wah. The baby sucked and sucked and sucked and slept. The baby slept and slept and slept and slept and slept. I'm trying to bring this story to a point where we can pray. It's opening like this, but let me, I will find somewhere. But listen to me. When the baby began to toddle, and the baby began to understand, little by little, Yochebed taught that boy, Hebrew. Amram circumcised that boy. Boy, you are not an Egyptian. In the hand of your cupboard, I can imagine your cupboard. Everybody listen to me. In the last days of Moses, knowing that the boy cannot last, he began to speak to the spirit of the boy. Your name is Moses. You are Moses, son of Amram. Amram, son of Kohat. Kohat, son of Levi. Levi, son of Jacob. Jacob, son of Isaac. Isaac, son of Abraham. Boy, that is who you are. There are some of you here. Your boy does not know your God. Your boy does not know your heritage. Your children don't know where you are calling them little, 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 little in their days. Will they survive? You are Moses, son of Amram, son of Kohat, son of Levi, son of Jacob, son of Israel, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. You are not an Egyptian. Boy, you are not an Egyptian. Moses, this you must keep in your heart. Say nothing out. This you must keep in your heart. Because the days of reckoning, when you will need to take decisions, will come. Moses, you are son of Imran. Moses, you are son of Kohat. You are son of Levi. You are son of Jacob, who is Israel. You are also son of Isaac. You are son of Abraham. He, she started pumping and pumping and indoctrinating and initiating and inoculating and, and, and sending secret rema, secret light into the heart of this little boy and taught the boy how to keep his mouth shut because there is a time to talk and there is a time to keep quiet. Whenever that madam comes, she's your mother. She's your mother. They say she's not your mother. What I nearly carried you, she's the one that brought you out. But I'm your mother. I'm the one that gave birth to you. But don't show it. Whenever she comes, run and say, Mommy, 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 mommy. Jump into her hands. Laugh. Climb her back. But Moses, I'm your mother. You are Moses, son of Emram. You are Moses, son of Kohat. You are Moses, son of Levi. You are Moses, son of Jacob, son of Israel, son of Isaac. You are Moses, son of Abraham. The injection was heavy. That princess will come. Moses will jump by instruction. Say, mommy, mommy, mommy. Hey, mommy, what did you bring for me? Say, I brought meat. I will say, yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. 
But the guardian of Israel, at the back of the boy's mind, he will hear you are Moses, son of Imram. You are Moses, son of Kohat. You are Moses. You are son of Levi. You are son of Jacob. You are son of Abraham. He will dance around the woman. But he will keep the revelation of the originality of where he came from. Some may be sleeping, some may be awake because of my long analysis. But blessed are your ears for the things they hear. Blessed are your ears for the things that are coming. Blessed are your ears because of the survival of your children. Isaiah said, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders upon the mountain of Zion. Listen to me. If you are here, your child is not saved. You are an apology. this story here many years some years ago of a pastor that has a congregation that is about this congregation about six thousand people everybody in the house saved born again filled with the holy ghost wife father everybody but something happened the last born the very last and it can always happen probably the discipline with which they brought the first they didn't apply it for the last the boy went to school and started learning how to smoke how they didn't know on time by the time they knew it, it was too late. Everything they did to bring this boy, it was terrible. The boy refused. The boy became an embarrassment to the father. The boy became too bad. The boy became wild on drugs, on weeds, on drink, wild, partying, fighting. Everything this man did, nothing happened. But I'd like, you to, I'd like to provoke you to jealousy. Look at Look at the woman. This woman called Yokebed. Look at what she was able to do. And look at your own children. And beat yourself on the chest. I'm going to be fighting for my child. For my family. And by implication I mean even your spiritual children. The crocodiles of the Nile will not eat my children. The waters will not carry them. Wherever my child is, my child is coming back home. That's something you must put on your spirit. One day without warning, this pastor went to the altar. He was on the altar and he told everybody in church, I'm sorry, members of the board that are present, this is supposed to be said in a board meeting, but if I bring it, there will be contemplations, there will be arguments. Church, I'm your pastor. Everybody shouted, yes sir, because they love him. Very electric pastor, very wonderful pastor. They love him so much. He said, I'm sorry. This morning, I want to announce my official resignation from this pulpit. And this is the reason I have all of you. But what shall it profit me if I carry all of you to heaven and I lose my own? My ship has gone over the hills, over the mountain. My ship is lost somewhere. Until I find that boy, I'm not coming back. If you find a pastor that can look after you, go ahead. But this is my story. I am going. Pray for me. There was dead silence. He dropped the microphone, picked his Bible. Somebody opened his mouth and started weeping. The weeping became contagious. 6,000 people began to cry. They fell on their faces. Nobody preached. Nobody sang for hours. Church couldn't close. All of them were saying, Lord, we need our pastor. Bring this boy. Lord, we need our pastor. Bring 6,000 voices invaded heaven. And as those 6,000 voices went to heaven, Heaven could not rest. What the man tried for years, he couldn't. Where the boy was, the incense of that prayer started sending down fire. Something came upon the boy and arrested the boy. Where the man was, he started receiving a call. And when he said, hello, who is that? He said, dad, I'm the one. He said, son, can I help you? The boy broke down. Daddy, can I come back home? Daddy, can I come back home? Daddy, can I come back home? 
Alimo saka pakalatas kala fetente kepredina handa. I hear prophecy that there are some of you that are under the sound of my voice. Your husband is lost. Your brother is lost. Your son is lost. Your daughter is lost. But under this cloud of prayer, I hear the sound from heaven. They will come back to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Moses suddenly saw the princess. I said, your care bed. Thank you for all you did. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My boy is growing. My boy is okay. Can I take my boy? Can I take my boy? Ha ha, that's your mother caught, but she didn't show it. She looked at the boy, held the boy to her breast. Probably whispered into her ear, Moses, don't forget. Son of Imram. Don't forget. Don't forget. Son of Levi. Don't forget. Son of Kohat. Don't forget. Son of Jacob. Don't forget. You are son of Isaac. Son of Abraham. Son, the Lord bless you. Still hugging. Say, Haba, let the boy go now. Hey, you have come to love this, my son. I don't know how many years old Moses was when he was released from the hand of Yochebed into the hand of this woman. But hear me. There was a necessity that took him away. And I'm going to be touching those necessities. Ta, ta, pa, 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 pa. I need, we need to close and go. Listen to me. The name of Moses changed. He became known as the prince of Egypt. The one that came from the river brought by the gods, donated by the princess, to become another pharaoh. It was the god that brought this boy. That is how the fetishes, the oracle began to describe the boy. It's not an ordinary boy. Oh. He came from the water. The god gave her to this woman because she was childless. Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. And by reason of that he had to go to the university. He became learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. He learned to read. He learned to write. And because he was also a prince, he had to go to the military academy. Princes are warriors. He learned to fight. He learned to drive chariots. He learned how to fight with the sword, with the soldiers. Ka, 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 ka. He learned so many things that makes for manliness. He was trained on how to run through the desert and run back without missing road. In the hand of this woman, hey, spirit of the living God, kakiatos kafaraya. And on and on. The pomposity of the Egyptians were on his shoulder. Everywhere he went, people bowed. Everywhere he went, he was Pharaoh to be. But there was something that Yokebe did that could not be removed. The years of training could not kill it. The idolatry of Egypt could not kill it. Up till today, some of the strongest occult of the world are still in Egypt. The man of the throne on the throne is called Pharaoh, son of Ra. And that Ra means the son. The son was their God. And they, they said that it was the son. Just like Jesus came as the son of God. That Pharaoh was born son of the sun. And on the head of Pharaoh, you could always see the shape of a cobra. Showing that they worship the cobra. Under that shadow, Moses grew. But what the mother put inside her, those things could not kill. Permit me to go over something that is important, but let me just jump over it. As Moses began to grow, he began to catch a picture. Why did God allow me to go to the water? Why did God allow me to come to this palace? Why am I a prince? Why am I a soldier? He began to occur to the boy that these are the plans of heaven. Every training you receive, 
from your fathers in the Lord, from your mother in the Lord, every exposure in life is supposed to be a pointer to the kind of assignment that God will want you to be. The military training, everything you are going through is because one day you will become the deliverer of these people. Put your hand on your chest. And pray for yourself. Say, Lord. Loud and say, Lord. There's a future before me. There are things I have gone through. Lift up your other hand. Lift up your free hand. One hand on your chest. Say, Lord. There's a future before me. There are things I have gone through. I want to hear your voice. Oh, Lord. I ask for pictures of tomorrow. I ask for pictures of my assignment. I ask for pictures of my future. I ask for pictures of what you want me to do. May the Lord answer that prayer in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. But permit me to let you know this now that pictures are not enough. There is a wisdom that should go with pictures. Pictures are important. The way I'm seeing myself, God wants me to deliver my people. God wants me to deliver my people. But we all know that one of the greatest mistakes that Moses did was that he crossed one timetable and he began to kill using the urge of anger that we will not be able to go into. He missed one calendar. And at the end of it all, he ran. But what was actually the virtue in the heart of Moses was that when he became grown, Moses was able to tell himself what my mother told me, what my father told me. This is the time to stand up. Else, I will die an Egyptian forever. This is the time to bring out my identity. Else, they will crown me king of Egypt. The land of my nativity will be lost. My pilgrimage will be lost. My assignment will be lost. The name of Abraham will be lost. And the Bible says she, he was able to tell himself, I am not the daughter of this woman. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And I want to bring this word to you this night. That at this point of your life, for some of you, there is a mix-up you need to clarify. There are several identities around your life that if you are not careful, compromise will not allow you to separate. Like I said, I'm jumping for time's sake. But can I ask you a question? Is there anywhere you are at one junction of your life, whether at work, whether at home, the controversy of your stand is under question? Is it possible that you are hearing me tonight? Your father is not aware that you are born again. Your mother is not aware that you are born again. There's one fear that is making you to hide your identity. Moses stood up boldly and said, whatever be the case, whatever it will cost me, I am not Pharaoh's son. I am not the son of this woman. I am Moses. I am a Jew. I'm a child of God. I have a covenant with God. And he was able to bring out his identity clearly. The cost of it all was that he lost ground. And as he lost ground, he fled for his life. The next phase of what he went through, if God will give me another opportunity, that's where I'll be drawing certain sword and certain strength that will be like part of our power package. If God will give me another opportunity to talk. But for tonight, listen to me. I can't go beyond this point. Listen to me. Can you survive? That's the prayer. Can you survive? Will you survive? Will you resolve? Will you make up your mind? Will you come before the Lord and say, Lord, if Daniel survived, he had one news. If Joseph survived, he had two ears like myself. Lord, I want to survive. Number two. The things that God has committed into your hand. 
And there are different custodians here. Different custodians. Different custodians. Custodians of children. Custodians of churches. Custodians of little ones. Custodians of foster children. Custodians of employees. Will they survive? Will they survive? I want to draw attention to the initial utterance of this meeting because I'm going to be making us to pray, to pray, to pray. Survive first before talk to me. Survive first. Survive first. In the quietness of your heart. I'd like you to carry yourself to surely goodness and mercy shall follow us on the last day, the morning of the end of this conference. Everything you have heard now is supposed to be like packages you will carry in your bag and you will begin to say, Lord, hitherto have you helped me. As I leave this place, please help me. Help me to survive. Let us pray. I can't go beyond this point. But let us pray. Everybody, please stand to your feet. Lift up your two hands to the Father. wherever you are under the sound of my voice your prayer is going to be very very intentional it's not going to be emotional keep your hands up I'd like you to begin to call your name before the Lord. Oh Lord, my name is Ame Amana. Call it like seven times. Please, can you? Please be, be, be intentional. Let nobody's voice be louder than your voice. Call your name intentionally. Call your name intentionally. Call your name intentionally. And after that, begin, begin to cry. Kalaba Soto Makata. Alaka to legebe shete. Sebebe bebebe alaba katana. Not somebody's name, but your name. Your name. Your name. You have been coming to this conference. But let this hour be a different hour. I must survive. Lord, I must survive. Lord, I must survive. Lord, I must survive. Whatever strength, whatever grace, whatever anointing, whatever breath, whatever life. Please open your mouth and pray. Don't let your prayer come down. Be alone in the prayer. Forget about whosoever is standing by your side. Kalaba katanda gabra de kopalatus kan lefetete. Leta tambra de koprate. I must survive, oh Lord. By Sunday morning, you will be alone. Please pray. 
Mina Gabaratata. You need to open your mouth wherever you are. Let nobody pray your prayer. Let nobody cry your cry. I stop where I stop so that we can have some time to really pray. Pray. I beg you, pray. Everybody, 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 I must survive. By your grace, I must survive. Whether the devil likes it or not, Lord. My yaka tanda gabra deko soto baka latuse. Eleka teleka tulaba kasata. voice is the voice I'm hearing. Be sure your cry is the cry that angels are picking. Everybody pray. Tula 
Let the Spirit have His way. Holy Ghost have Your way. Sabina gapara tonega tetele gina maya. Don't be emotional. Be very intentional. Let your decision be strong. From your heart. From your spirit. Be sure you are praying wherever you are in this camp. I must survive. That thing that used to appear to you in the night. children, of your husband, of your family members are here. This may be your hour now to raise a lamentation for your child and raise a cry for your family. My little girl 
brother, oh Lord. My sister, oh Lord. My husband, oh Lord. Raise your voice and pray. Karaba magra beka tala tula gabra de kamenta la bezatete. Ebata bata tala kamina gabra de kopola toska la fatai. Araba katanda gabra deya. The water could not swallow Moses. The crocodile could not swallow Moses. Aya baka tanda gabra de kopala tula gabra de kapele. Let prayers arise. Save my children, O Lord. in this camp. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I will survive. In my time, I will revive. You will preserve me. You will keep me. You will hold me.
You are my strength. Sila banea. You are my God. Kalabane I put my trust. Sheka Malika Tue. Thank you, Lord. Karaba Sabaraba Natala Bradeika to Salaba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Very intentional, very purposeful. Let it be decisive. Put one hand on your belly. And raise your free hand. We'll soon be done. I commission the angels of God that all through this night, by the entitlement of the saints that say they are ministering spirits, I declare that all through this night, angels will be ministering to you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Now with one voice, everybody say, Father, whatever you have not planted that is inside of me, that is around my life, that is influencing my life, let me hear you shall fire. Let me hear you shall come out. Now open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray. Everybody. Every sickness, every disease, every pain. Pray like you mean it. Come out. I charge you in the name of Jesus. I command you. Come out in the name of Jesus. go by fire by fire unbearable fire liquid fire melt die come out be uprooted every fibroid every cancer every diabetes Your spirit of hepatitis, Corona or Omicron, go HIV. Strange movement in your body. Glaucoma. Eye trouble. Pain in the leg, pain in the back, pain in the chest. Blindness. Deafness. The hand of the Lord locates you. Every mental condition.
provision in your family. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Touch your people. Heal your people. Yes, afflictions has gone are going. Demons are going. Swelling, disappearing. You won't see it again. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight, Lord, we bring your people before your throne. May the entrance of your word create light. May the wisdom of your word sit in the heart of men. We decree, Lord, that what you did for Moses, so much that none was lost, that shall become the portion of this camp and these people in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree that from today there shall be no more losses in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whosoever is lost that belongs to you, by the strength and the wave of this utterance, we command that that prodigal son begin to return home in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask of you, Father, that because of the future, because of the journey, because of the assignment that you have ordained for every one of us here, the Father at the junction of what shall I do? We plead with you, Lord, that the river that is called the word of the wisdom of the Lord, that is called the light of God, let it become the heritage and the response of God for your people in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand in faith against the pharaohs of your territory, the pharaohs of your villages, the pharaohs of the market where you trade, the pharaoh of the school where you work, the pharaohs of the establishment around your life. Father, we bind and we subdue pharaohs in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. God of possibilities, we key into the testimony that our brother gave here. An express testimony of what you can do. The corridor of the millions is possible. The corridor of audacity, prayer is possible. God of all possibility. I'm asking that Father, you will usher your people to another level in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We break the yoke of hurdles. We break the yoke of mountains. 
we break the yoke of limitations. We ask, oh God, that the breath of your presence will tabernacle over your people. Your people will live. Your people will not die. Every disease, every infirmity, every demon, whatever it is, Lord, that has been mentioned, oh God, by a burden in your presence, I lend my voice in the place of faith. And I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, their miracles are secured. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Receive help. Receive strength. Miracle upon miracle. Deliverance upon deliverance. Survivor. Reviver. Survivor. Reviver. Survivor. Reviver. Reviver. Receive the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. We return grace and glo glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by these instructions. For further inquiries or counsel, please contact Vale of Ibon, Seed Time and Harvest Revival Labels, Ohidi, Anambra State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers. 081 123 or 081 7 Website www.veilofhebron.com May the Lord grant you grace to walk in the light of the truth you have received in Jesus' name. Amen.